Amen. All right. I invited Pastor Tim to speak today in our uh, special church celebration and in light with all the transition uh, with the students and everything with the kids. Go ahead. Bless you, brother. Now, before we begin, I think it's ideal that we pray to just allow God to come in and speak to us during this time. Dearly Father, we come before you right now, and we just ask you to be with us during this message. Father God, open our eyes to see, open our ears to hear, and open up our hearts and our minds to listen and obey. We pray this in the name of Jesus Christ, and everybody said, amen. I start that every time that I get into the Word of God with the kids to make sure that they are completely focused on him. All right. So I'm going to start with this. Have you ever wondered what kind of impact your faith, your experience, and especially your obedience would have on others around you? Have you ever wondered about that? Or have you wondered if anybody actually notices your walk with Christ? I want to look at the book of Genesis today and specifically look at one person in particular who had a big impact not only on the Israelites and the Jewish culture, but also on Christianity today. The person that we're going to talk about today is Abram or Abraham. And I want to turn to the book of Genesis chapter 12, and I want to start off right away with verses 1 here. And it says, The Lord had said to Abram, Go from your country, your people, and your father's household to the land I will show you. I will make you into a great nation, and I will bless you. I will make your name great, and you will be a blessing. I will bless those who bless you, and whoever curses you I will curse. And all people, all the peoples on earth, will be blessed through you. So Abram went as the Lord had told him, and Lot went with him. Abram was 75 years old when he set out from Haran. He took his wife Sarah, his nephew Lot, all his possessions they had accumulated, and the people they had acquired in Haran. And they set out for the land of Canaan, and they arrived there. Abram traveled through the land as far as the site of the great tree of Marah at Shechem. At that time, the Canaan, uh, Canaanites were in the land. The Lord appeared to Abram and said, To your offspring I will give this land. So he built an altar there to the Lord and he, or who had appeared to him. You see, that was Abram's first act of obedience. He listened to God when God told him to go, leave his place of where he was living, and he acted out that first act of obedience. The Lord told Abram to leave there, and when he got there and he showed him, he built an altar to worship God first. The land that God showed him was going to end up becoming the promised land for the Israelites. There's the first part of his impact of his obedience. In Genesis chapter 15, we see another part of Abram's obedience. In verses 1 through 5, it says, After this, the word of the Lord came to Abram in a vision. Do not be afraid, Abram. I am your shield, your very great reward. But Abram said, Sovereign Lord, what can you give me since I remain childless? And the one who will inherit my estate is Eliezer of Damascus. And Abram said, you have given me no children, so a servant in my household will be my heir. Then the word of the Lord came to him. This man will not be your heir, but a son who is your own flesh and blood will be your heir. He took him outside and said, look up the sky and count the stars. If indeed you can count them. Then he said to him, so shall your offspring be. Abraham believed the Lord and he credited it to him as righteousness. Moses was looking at this where he had to continue to trust and obey God. He was looking at his wife who was unable to have a child at that time. He thought that his, his entire uh, heir would go to someone else, a slave or a, a servant of his. But God promised him to have children, to have descendants more than the stars in the sky. God promised that 
And in chapter 21 of Genesis, we read that Abraham's wife, Sarah, gives birth to a son, Isaac, his one and only true descendant from his flesh. But it gets confusing in this story as you read the book of Genesis and, and in the story of Abraham because in Genesis chapter 22, something happens. God comes to Abraham and tells him, So sometime later, God tested Abraham. He said to him, Abraham, here I am, he replied. Then God said, take your son, your only son, whom you love, Isaac, and go to the region of Morah. Sacrifice him there as a burnt offering on a mountain. I will show you. I can guess Abraham was probably slightly confused. He just had been promised a son he was promised descendants more than the stars in the sky. And God is sitting there saying, now go take your son, offer him as a sacrifice to me. Any normal human being in their right mind would walk away. But Abraham trusted God. He was faithful. He obeyed God and he went. He took Isaac, who, Isaac, if you imagine a kid questioning dad, Daddy, where are we going? Daddy, why are we going up to the mountain to have for a sacrifice? Where's the sacrifice? And Abraham kept on having to say, God will provide the sacrifice. Because in, in verse 8 it says, God himself will provide the lamb for the burnt offering, my son. They went up there, and as soon as they were up there, they got the altar built. And in verse 10, it says, Then he reached out his hand, took his knife after he laid his son on the altar, to slay his son. But the angel of the Lord called out to him from heaven, Abraham, Abraham, here I am, replied. Do not lay a hand on the boy, he said. Do not do anything to him. Now I know that you, have, or that you fear God, because you have not withheld from me your son, your only son. Abraham looked up. And there in a thicket he saw a ram caught by its horns. He went over and took the ram and sacrificed it as a burnt offering instead of his son. So Abraham called that place the Lord will provide. And to this day it is said that on the mountain of the Lord it will be provided. That story right there, that, that portion of, of Abraham's story, has me thinking. Are we willing to obey God in whatever he asks? Abraham was about to kill his son at the altar as a living sacrifice to God. But God provided the ram and saw his faithfulness and saw his obedience. And because of that, he blessed him. There was an impact that Abraham had on the Israelites, on the Jewish culture, and even Christianity today. Because you see, Abraham's descendants continue to grow in numbers. And if you look in the New Testament in Matthew chapter 1, it lays out the entire genealogy of Jesus Christ. And it goes from Abraham all the way to Jesus Christ. It was because of Abraham's faithfulness and obedience that that impact touched generation after generation after generation after generation. It kept on going through the lineage. And now, because of Abraham's obedience, Jesus Christ was able to come to this earth to die on the cross for our sins. We, too, are touched by Abraham's obedience and faithfulness. That impact continues today. You know, there's a song that we sang as a child, Father Abraham. Father Abraham had many sons. Had many sons had Father Abraham. I am one of them. And so are you. So let's just praise the Lord. And then you go through right arm, left arm, all that kind of stuff. But that just shows you that that impact is even being taught to kids in a simple song like that. Have you stopped to wonder or think, how is your obedience, how is your faithfulness impacting your generations to come? You know, I've been pondering on this idea about how will my life impact others? How will my life in Christ especially have an effect on my kids? 
the kids here at church? How about the entire community around me as a whole? I've been thinking about this for several weeks. Since my dad died, see the impact he had because he obeyed God's calling. All the lives that he changed because he obeyed. He was faithful. Were times hard at times? Yes. Was my dad always happy because of stuff that was going on in his life? No. But because he set on that path of obedience and faithfulness and did what God called him to do, many people were impacted. So my challenge to you today is where is your obedience? Where is your faithfulness? And are you ready to leave an impact? Are you trusting God to follow through in all areas of your life? Your finances. Are you worrying about your finances? Don't worry about it. Obey God when he tells you to tithe. Obey God when he tells you to give. Obey God when he tells you to serve. Don't worry about the worldly things because this is not our home. This is not the impact that we need to have is the worldly impact. We need the spiritual impact. Are you following God's calling on your life? Or have you put the calling to the side to pursue worldly things? Has God called you just to be in, in the workplace? Maybe. But if God has called you to something more, to serve him more, maybe it's going overseas. Fetters, you're following that calling right now. You've got to step out in faith and believe and obey what God has called you to do. The other part is if you are a parent, are you leading your family towards God? Are you acting the same here at church as you are at home? Are you reading the Bible? Are you teaching your kids about Scripture at home? Or are you just bringing them to the church to let the church do it? Because I guarantee you, the impact you're going to make at home is a lot greater than just bringing your child to church. That happened to me. My dad was my pastor. He was my kid's pastor. But the more impact that I had with him was when he taught me in private at home. Pushed me to be the better person. Pushed me to be a better pastor even. Even the, the day before he died, he called me and encouraged me on VBB. My last challenge is for you kids and you teenagers out here. How are you preparing yourself to make an impact to those around you? Many of you guys are going back to school here this week. And guess what? You can either be on the one side of, oh, I don't like the restrictions I have, so I'm going to complain about it. Or you can be the shining light of Christ and allow them to see that through you. You're never too young to make an impact. One of my dad's favorite verses and why we used it for VBB was, do not let anyone look down on you because you are young, but set an example in life, love, speech, and purity. Are you prepared to make an impact on this world spiritually, not physically, spiritually, generations to come or even now? Worship team, come on up. Pastor Arnold. Thank you, Pastor Tim. Give him a big hand. You know, in our life, have you ever heard people talk about leaving a legacy a lot? Leaving a legacy about this, leaving a legacy about that, and sometimes it is being taken, I, I feel like, almost a little bit too far with like everything that you build up in life. You know, the psalmist even says, who knows? Who is coming after me? If everything that I tried to work for or build up is, is gone, just right the next day. You know, you never know what legacy you really leave. But one thing is sure, the only legacy that we can leave is the legacy of obedience. And so Pastor Tim preached about right now. The legacy of obedience, there's, there's a portion that the Lord has assigned to each and every one of us. 
Amen? And it's not a, a calling for somebody else. It's a task that he has for us. You guys, when, when you are going through school, when you are going through, through college, there is something that the Lord wants to do through you that he doesn't want to do through anybody else. He wants to do it through you. And the only thing that you have to do is to be obedient to that calling, to walk with the Lord on the everyday basis, to, uh, to learn, to discern his voice. Do you remember little Samuel? Little Samuel had to learn to distinguish what was the voice of Eli, his, the high priest, his own voice. Sometimes we're in the same place. We have to learn to distinguish what's the voice of the world, what is the voice that's going on in our head, and what is the voice of the Lord. And that is the voice that we are supposed to follow. And if we follow that, we will leave a legacy of obedience. In the end, it comes down to obedience. It's not about sacrifice. The Lord, you know, does not require. Even King David said, Lord, if you would ask me of gold or silver, any, any treasure, I would give it to you. He's sitting on piles of gold and silver as a king over Israel. But he says to him, but none of that you require. The only thing that you require is a, is a broken heart, a contrite spirit. It's this obedience. It's that obedience, that fellowship with the Lord. I'm grateful for this day today as we're celebrating this transition for our kids to transition to youth, the challenges of the world, the accomplishments and everything. Let's really just think about this, about our obedience. And I think we as, as grown-ups, we can take an example on that too. It's good for us to get reminded on that. Where is our obedience? Because that's the only thing when we appear, we all appear before the judgment seat of Christ. Amen. One day we're going to be there and the, the words of the Lord are going to be good and faithful servant. Based on what? Based on merit? Based on sacrifice? Based on good intentions? No, it's going to be based on the obedience. Amen. Based on the obedience and the fellowship that we have with the Lord. So let's take all of this as a challenge for our personal life, shall we?